Good morning all, uh, welcome along to What A Load Of Ball, episode 34. Uh, sorry for the bit of a hiatus in uploads for any regular viewers and uh, welcome along to any new viewers. Uh, we're moving on to a bit of a new project, so new content and maybe appealing to a different audience. Um, if you don't recognise this cockpit, we're in an RX-8. <laughs> So um, I've wanted one of these for quite some time. Um, my lad also into them, although he's more into RX-7s, but they're way out of budget, as you can probably imagine. Um, I bought this for a really good price as a non-runner. Um, in my mind, I got a good price for a chassis, um, and if it works, added bonus. Now, I've had it a week. It was a bit of an ordeal getting it home. I got towed from... Uh, Bridgewater to Taunton area um, in horrific rain, had problems with the immobiliser, eventually got it started and I've been dailying it for a week and it's a cracking drive, it's a real nice environment to be in. Um, I've never actually owned a, a true rear wheel drive car before or anything naturally aspirated with um, this much power, I guess. So it's just shy of 200 horse, probably realistically, probably about 175, but um, everything I've owned for the last few, or the last decade has had a turb ski on it. Um, other appealing factor, it is already converted to run on LPG. Um, it uses a stag system as well, which is what I'm about to fit into the stag here. Um, so that's good. Um, but after a week of driving, it is uh, showing symptoms of some typical RX-8 faults. So this is a Series 1. Uh, it's a late 2006 on a 56 plate in the UK. Um, it starts okay when it's cold. It runs okay when it's cold, but hot starts um, it's not so happy with. And I actually broke down on my way home on Thursday this week on the dual carriageway coming into Taunton and um, caused a bit of a traffic problem. Um, so other symptoms, I guess it runs pretty lumpy or rough when it's hot. Um, so we're going to do a bit of troubleshooting um, and some diagnostics today. First thing I'm going to do is to put in a new starter motor. So the, um, the one that comes with these is, a, I believe, a 1.2 kilowatt unit. Um, and it's a good upgrade apparently to uh, go for a more powerful one. So I got this from Max Speeding Rods. Uh, it's the first time I'm trying any of their stuff, but uh, they've been looking after a few companies or a few channels and people that I follow. So I thought I'd try out their stuff. Um, 56 quid, I think, from Amazon, delivered in two days. I'll put a link in the description for that. So that is a 2.2 kilowatt unit. So that's going to give us a lot more cranking power. Um, after I've fitted the starter motor, I'm going to go for a drive and get it warm. And then I'm just going to dive in with a compression test because I think that's the most sensible thing to do. Um, I've already put in a new battery. It, it came with a shot battery, so that's fine. We need that to get ignition and to get it started anyway. Um, but yeah, all signs are, are pointing to low compression. Now, I don't have a rotary specific compression tester um, and I don't have an analog gauge either. I'm very lucky in that I managed to borrow uh, a full uh, Picoscope system, uh, the automotive uh, kit with pressure transducer as well. So I'll be sharing um, some examples of what I would expect from an oscilloscope. And I'll also show you uh, getting it all set up and what we capture with this one. So like I said, I'm expecting this to pick up some uh, low compression, whether it's on both rotors or one corner of a rotor, I don't know. But all signs are pointing to apex seals and this will prove whether that's it or not. Uh, along with the kit, it's got some pretty cool um, non-contact coil testers as well. So I think after we fitted the starter motor, before we do the pressure test while it's warming up, we'll just run through it with the, it's like an induction wand. And you can just check to see whether coil packs are functioning or not. Um, there are four coil packs in the boot. So I, it kind of implies that 
our previous owner has swapped them recently. The ones that are in the boot do look to be in good condition, so if I need to swap them out to do some uh, general coil pack testing, I can do that. Um, so yeah, that might pick up on something to do with the, the lumpy running when it's warm. Really don't know, totally new to these things, but have been doing a lot of research this week as uh, symptoms have been getting worse and worse. Uh, so, n enough waffling, I'm going to crack on now, I'm going to get it jacked up um, and get underneath and do the starter motor. I'm also going to disconnect the neutral strap for the battery, or the ground strap for the battery, um, just so that I don't cause any arcs or sparks while I'm underneath. Uh, I should have said also, if um, if the compression test does come out okay, which I'm not all that hopeful on, I'm also going to fit a fuel pump because that's the other uh, possible cause for a hot start problem. But I actually filled the tank as you can see, <laughs> so I, I want to try and avoid opening the tank uh, to do the pump. Um, but if, uh, like I said, if it comes back and the compression's fine, by that point I'll have gone out for a drive and hopefully burnt off some fuel anyway. Um, and then uh, we'll go from there. So yeah. I'll uh, show you the battery, disconnecting all that, I'll get it all jacked up and we'll get underneath to the starter motor. From first glance already the other day it looks pretty easy to get to so um, should be a straightforward one. So here we go, Series 1 Renesis engine bay. There's the gas ECU up there, looks to be a pretty tidy install. Uh, batteries in this one, but in order to get to that you need to take off the engine cover, these just all pop off. Blunk, 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 um, and then I'll show you disconnecting the battery in just a sec. So here's the new battery underneath. I uh, got this one from Halfords with the trade card. Uh, I've got one of these in the, the stage here, so I know they're pretty good. Um, this one's the ground, and it's got a 10 mil here, so I'm just going to back that off. Disconnect the ground, that should uh, isolate everything, and it might do your alarm or set your alarm off when you do that, so have your remote ready. So I've used this jacking point, got my trusty puck in there as well to grab the silt. And then I'm about to put it, drop it onto that part of the subframe on the actual stand. Starter motor is just there, and a very stiff chassis. It's lifted the rear wheel, and you can really feel that when you drive it. It's a real pleasure. So uh, hopefully it's okay. If not, we might be learning how to rebuild rotaries. So yeah, very stiff chassis. It's on the, just on that stand and both wheels are off the ground. So, impressive. Okay, so here's the start motor. I'm gonna take off this black one first. You can't see it all that well. I think that's the signal. And uh, the battery live looks to be under this protective cover. I've got one bolt there one bolt there definitely looks like the original piece so uh, even if this doesn't fix everything at least we're, we're putting in a new item and an upgraded one at that so to get that black one off it's just a little uh, pressure clip you just got to pinch it further down on that little step there and it slides straight off and then you can get to the protective cap from above flip that down and inside there is a 12 mil nut and that's the, the live but you've got nothing to worry about if you have disconnected the neutral as I have because even if it shorts on something it's got no return back to the battery and then the bolts to actually get the starter motor off are a 14 so it looks to be just two one there and then one tucked up in there and I might need a bar on a bar or a bar with a hinge or something to get to that one but I'm sure it'll be straightforward uh, I've changed quite a few starter motors in my day and uh, this is uh, very nice and accessible so well done Mazda on that one but perhaps you should have put in a proper unit to start with just saying okay so that second one actually put up quite a bit of a fight I had to get a nut extractor on that uh, fortunately though I could get to the other end um, to get purchased on this side so you're gonna have to find a replacement nut but I'm sure I've got something uh, so in theory I just need to finish off the bolt which I started with, the one which is easy to see and easy to access. 
and then the start motor should just drop out. Okay, so that did just drop out. Um, it's a little bit oxidized around the flange where it mounts on, so I'm gonna give that a scrub with a wire brush before I fit the new one, because no doubt that will help with general grounding of the motor. Um, so yeah, let's do that and get the new one in. Okay, so a few differences. This one is hooded, this one is not hooded. Um, in fact, I think it should be that way around. It is listed as a direct fit, but then I have also seen some motors listed as, as hooded, so we'll see. Um, these look like they're at a different orientation, but that shouldn't be a problem. So, uh, let's sling it in and see how we go. These distances look good. Right, and she's in. So, ever so slightly different clocking from the, the solenoid here, but it does all fit. Um, uh, shouldn't have taken all that long, but that one that was up there was pretty seized. So, I think if you got a better purchase on it than I did to start with. You could probably do the starter motor in, in an hour easily but that did take me a bit of faffing and I did need a nut extractor. Fortunately I found another nut which fitted on that so that's all good. Time to clear up all this junk and uh, start it up see how it sounds. Okay I have just done one but I'll show you how much better the crank is now. Don't mind the beep, that's the LPG. So, fired up straight away. Uh, those that don't know, if you, um, there's a little sticker here. If you're not up to temp and you had to start it briefly, um, there's a little procedure here. So go up to 4,000 revs, hold it for 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, Five, four, three, two, one. Turn the key off with your foot still on the throttle until it completely stops. So that's that. Okay, so now that I know that the starter motor is working and it is an improvement, whether that's fixed the hot start problem or not, it's definitely better. Um, I'm gonna get it down off the jack stands, move it 90 degrees, because I wanna get it warm idling up to temp and I don't really wanna gas out my neighbor. We'll have a play with the Pico Scope using the coil tester. Um, and then after that, we'll go for a drive and get it really warm and then uh, come back and uh, do a compression test because you need to be warm when you do the compression test. Okay, so I'm all rigged up with the Pico Scope. I'm using the Automotive 7 software and I've got this one here. Morning. Um, it's logging currently, and if I jump onto each HTV, which we can see, and then get some sort of data at the bottom. Now, I'm not even sure if I'm doing this right, but it is giving me some comparable data, and that is suggesting that all of them are behaving approximately the same. But I think what I'll do is go for a drive, get it warmed up, and then come back and try and do this one again. But so far that uh, seems like it's working. Well that was a relatively warm start and that fired up straight away with the new start motor so that is reassuring. It does feel a bit lumpy though. So um, I'm only going to go out, do a little test drive or just get it up to temperature, give it a thrash um, and then get it all jacked up and drop a spark plug on each rotor um, and then do the compression test. So we're back from our warm-up lap. As you might be able to hear it feels lumpy, not like cool Bridgeport lumpy, like not good. And I'm just going to try it on gas a sec because it was really um, don't like idling on gas. That's how I got stuck the other day. It was the first time I was um, using gas and then it stalled on me and then it wouldn't start when it's hot. So fortunately I got a, a cable coming 
to uh, tap into the gas ECU so we can have a look at that and retune the idle if we need to um, put it back onto petrol just get out any gas so I think uh, probably a good idea to try a hot start so we're definitely warm so let's go off and I mean that went straight away it didn't do that before so that is very reassuring let's just try it again again that was that was brilliant it sounded really good um, I, I wish I'd recorded how the old starter sounded um, but it didn't sound nice and that sounds real swift I'm just gonna do it again Beautiful. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to do another ignition test. Um, I'm going to look for the specific test to do with this wand because I don't think I was doing it right, although it was giving us some sort of data. I'll try that um, just to test each coil pack now that it's warm to see whether any of the lumpiness is to do with those. Um, if they all look the same again, I'm guessing that's not it. And then what I'll do is manoeuvre it back into um, position on the hard standing and then we'll jack up the front corner so we can get to the spark plugs and do our compression test. But I mean it drives really good and now it's starting so I'm actually feeling a bit more confident about this. Um, so if it does come back and all three chambers or all three sectors of each rotor are good then we'll probably fit a fuel pump. Um, because I've got a spare one kicking about which we can just drop straight in so let's do one more hot start before I end this bit boom that is a big relief um, cool okay well I'm gonna get uh, get the Picoscope set up and I'll show you the new test if I find a, a more suitable one. Uh, well, I'll show you while I'm testing it anyway just so you can see the data while it's hot. Um, if you are an RX-8 uh, wizard and got any tips, pointers, do do put them in the comments. Um, I'm a bit of a noob, well I'm a massive noob when it comes to these Mazda things but I'd, uh, if you can see from my other videos I won pretty in depth with the Nissan, so I'm not not a noob when it comes to general troubleshooting. But this is a, a, a new learn for me, as it were. So do do share some stuff if or if you see me doing something wrong, put it in the comments. Do let me know and let other people know as well. Thanks. Right, I found the actual one for the coil-on plug, a secondary voltage test. So that's all set up at the moment. You can see it's actually doing stuff. That's it, near the battery, that's it, on the ground, that's me holding it in the air. So I'm just going to go and fire up the engine, and then we'll come back and test each of those coil packs and see what, how they look. I'll even try and record it as well, I don't know whether it is recording, just so that I can scroll back and see and compare actual numbers rather than just looking at it real time. Okay, so... We can hear the lumpiness. Let's find the first lead. Just go in there. Okay, so that's definitely doing stuff. Next lead. Oh. That is definitely doing stuff. Let's try and get a better angle on that. So. So, coil one. Coil two. Coil three. Coil four. So, stuff is happening there they all look very similar I don't think if there is a misfire it's caused by the ignition coil so that is some conclusive data I guess 
Um, and seeing as I have this here anyway, I thought it would be a good idea to try it. So, real good bit of kit, and it, it leads you all through it in the software. If you're getting into this kind of stuff, really recommend the uh, Picoscope Automotive Kit. So, I'm going to now shut it down, rearrange it, and uh, get into the spark plugs and get the pressure to transduce the setup. So with the car jacked up and this wheel off so you can get through this little access port to the spark plugs. Sorry about the focus. Um, when we do the compression test we'll be doing it in the lower ones but I am going to disconnect all of them uh, and also turn off the fuel pump and with it, with some of the plugs unplugged I'll also turn it over just to get out any vapour because we don't want that to try and ignite while we're doing the test. So uh, I'm going to find a way to mark all the leads so I know where they came from. We'll get them out and we'll get the adapter put in for the, the picoscope. Uh, here's the plug from the top of the first rotor or the rotor at the front of the engine. Um, I'm going to put it back in because obviously we need it in there for when we're testing compression but sort of bring it out to have a look. Can't focus though. So um, yeah it's one of those. I don't know whether these were put in when the LPG code conversion was done. It's got a 9 in it. Um, so I'll give this a clean up anyway uh, and then uh, check number 2 as well. Quite a big old gap there, so sorry, I'm not focusing very well on my phone. I will um, do a bit of research on that, or see what the plugs should look like. Because it could be that these are shot, but fortunately, nice and easy to get to. So uh, let's have a look at number two. Oh dear, I broke a plug. I've never done that before. I did. I cracked it, but I used the impact to try and get it out, and um, it shattered it. Fortunately, there's a couple of Euro car parts, so um, I'll leave this one out for now, and I'll replace it with one of the ones that was in the bottom, and then I'll put two fresh ones in the, uh, the bottom one. So they're the leading and trail, and it's these ones that need to compression chest test anyway, so I'll just take that plug out and pop it back into the top. But that was annoying, but fortunately there are a couple in stock just down the road. Um, just have to limp it there in the stadio. So the bottom plugs, or the leading plugs, appear to be a different one. Um, fortunately the ones that are in stock are the broken one. But uh, yeah, that's interesting. They both look similar. Um, I don't think they look bad. I will give them a clean before they go back in, but I think for now I'm going to have to put in this broken one. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'll put that one in to blank the top hole. Um, good to know that they're different. I'll check to see whether they're meant to be different, but at least I know the ones that I can get are available down the road. So let's. Uh, carry on and get the, the pressure kit we've rigged up. Okay, so here's the pressure transducer part. First you need to put in the boss where the spark plug goes, get that snug, then attach this hose. Um, I might want to use that as well, I don't know. I'm not doing a leak down, I'm just, I don't think I need that. And then connect it to this. And then we'll get a scope lead either from this box, must be in this box, and plug it into that box. So uh, yeah, let's get it all connected up. So before I do any cranking, i am pulled out the fuel pump relay, because I don't want any fuel. Uh, quite novel being able to actually look at the fuse cover and not translate it from Japanese, so that's quite useful. I'm going to have a look to see if there's an actual coil pack one. I don't think there is, but um, that should be enough. So, while I've got the bottom two open, before I put in that boss, I pause for thought. 
I'll um, give it a few cranks just to get any vapours out of the way and then get the test equipment all. Okay, so we're all set up. Um, one of the real nice things about the Picoscope software is it, it loads up an expected wave. So I um, said that I'm doing a compression test with the pressure transducer and on a, a normal piston engine this is what that should look like. Now, I've been doing a bit of research and I think it, a rotary should be more like this. Um, and each one of these is each apex seal essentially. So provided on say rotor one that we're going to test first that all of these peaks are about the same that suggests that they're all good or they're all shot um, and then we can compare it to rotor two after that so annoyingly um, the power lead for the uh, the pressure transducer is quite short so I don't know whether that reach into the car I'm on my own today I haven't got the, the helper to be cranking so um, might go look for a USB extension just so I can run that in because I need to be looking at the data as it comes in as I'm cranking. Looking pretty good. Okay, so I think I'm all set up correctly. I'm uh, going to give it some cranks and see what... Uh. Okay, so looking at rotor 2 we can see that two are sealing the same and one of them is out. Um, these are all a bit closer together as well. Um, but if I then go to rotor one, you'll see we're at three different heights. So um, I'm gonna have to look into these numbers they definitely don't look good, but they don't look terrible. I was worried that there might be like no compression, but that is some compression. So uh, yeah, I have to look into the numbers really and probably do a bit of an update at the end. But for now, I need to dart off and go and get a spark plug. Um, the stage is actually playing up, so I'm going to be playing with fire trying to go and get that. Um, so wish me luck, but uh, I'll go pick up these spark plugs and I can get this thing back together. And I think for the time being, it should be all right to limp on. Um, yeah, like I said, I have to have a look at these numbers because I think there's like a percentage difference that's allowed. And then there's also a percentage difference between rotors. So it might be that we're actually within spec, even though these aren't all equal. So fingers crossed. Okay, so making the most of this data logging now from the Picoscope. I'm currently looking at rotor one. Um, what I need to do is to, well, one, two, three, four is a full cycle. So starting at this peak and getting to nine full cycles, which is actually 10 peaks if I count the peaks comes to here. I need to measure that time. Then there's a formula I need to do to work out how many revs that's going. Um, and then I can compare these pressure readings to see whether they're in tolerance for said amount of revs. So I've just worked out start, finish in a few times. Um, so I'm going to do the equation and then I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, I'll also put the link to the Picoscope thread where I'm getting all this information from. Um, but yeah, that's around about 4.9, so that is very low. This is around about, let's have a quick look. Oh, I'm in zoom mode at the moment, it won't let me do that, but I will show you that in a sec anyway. Okay, so here's all the maps. Um, this number is the duration for nine revs. Then we do nine times 60 equals 540, 60 seconds. Divide that by nine revs, 1.7, gives us our RPM. So that was just shy of 320 for rotor one. And then I've done the same again, 312, negligible. Um, 
so then I've gone back through and looked at the peaks and on rotor one we're at 5.6 bar 5.3 bar and 4.95 so added them up divided by three the average for that is 5.2 um, looking at rotor 2, slightly better, 5.8, 5.75, average of 5.67. Now there is a difference of 10% between rotor 1 and rotor 2, um, but these numbers are way, way, way low. I've just been looking uh, online at a few graphs and things like that, and um, uh, at 300 RPM I should be seeing nearer to um, 8 bar so I'm quite a way off it is starting when warm or it was okay so I might see whether the starter motor band aids it for a bit I don't think I'm going to bother fitting a fuel pump because um, well I don't think that's the issue it's the definitely compression so I will um, it's all back together now, it's on its wheels. I've ordered some spark plugs, they're going to come tomorrow thanks to Amazon. Um, it does start and I think I can move it even with that broken bit of porcelain. Uh, so I think, yeah, I'm going to gamble it a bit, drive it for another week or so, see how it goes. Just be really cautious with hot starts. Um, and then probably look to rebuild the engine myself. I think I can get all the seals and stuff from Mazda. There's a Mazda garage quite nearby. Um, and I've seen quite a few videos on it too. So, uh, not a good introductory vehicle, I don't think, to, um, to the channel. Uh, but some real good diagnostics done today, uh, thanks to that Picascope and the, the pressure transducer. And hopefully anyone watching has learnt a little bit whether you didn't know anything about rotaries before, whether you did, um, hopefully we've learnt some stuff together because, like I said already, this is all new to me. So thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to end it there. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you haven't already, please, please subscribe. Slowly going up. Um, and, yeah, thanks for watching. I will probably have another video tomorrow. <laughs> because uh, the poor stage is poorly as well. So I think that's going to be a separate video, troubleshooting the, the transmission. Um, certainly not going to be on the dyno tomorrow as planned, which is a shame. Anyway, take it steady. Thanks for watching and uh, catch you soon.